Hi guys, Yurena here and welcome to the video part number two. If you haven't seen number one, it is where I actually explaining how to take pictures, so how to create the nice background, how to create in camera that painterly looking shot. So in the end of the video, I show you the raw pictures and some of you might feel that it doesn't look like much and it definitely doesn't look like a painterly one. So here's come video number two where I'm actually edit the image and create it painterly look and I'm going to show you one amazing trick it's so simple and yet it's just amazing you are going to love me if you don't know it you will love it so much I'm sure about that okay so without further ado let's get started let's go to the computer and make some magic happen okay guys so this is actually the image that I've selected today to edit uh, I had quite a few options, like this one is, seems nice and this one, but I still I chose this one to edit. As I said, I know it doesn't look uh, very painterly right now, but we did set up a nice kind of background to edit. And you might find that the image looks too dark. So I did it on purpose for this particular effect, just because uh, as we talked about in the video number one, paintings uh, of the chosen period uh, darker so if I need to brighten up I will go into brighten up uh, I will but if you will shoot too light that um, it might not look as organic as uh, if you will shoot on the darker side so that's why that's the reason why um, I shot it a little bit darker so let's start color balance well uh, actually if you will take a closer look you will notice that the image of paintings of uh, that period of is like 17th, 18th century, uh, they all kind of have yellowish, greenish hue to them, but you not necessarily have to stick to it. But I mean, just something to keep in mind. So uh, let's see, uh, this picture to me a little bit too green. So I will bring a little bit magenta and I'll warm it up just a tiny bit. Looks good to me. Now I'm going to set exposure just a tiny bit up and I wouldn't put too much contrast just because uh, paintings doesn't have that much contrast of that period uh, as much as the as well as uh, clarity so for example for some images you could add clarity but that's definitely not what we want if so we just even want to soften it a little bit more but I don't know, maybe I'll just stick with this one, although you get softened a little bit. Uh, same with contrast, you can lower the contrast. I'm not really worried about this particular, now I'm just making a very, very basic adjustments just because majority of the work I'm going to do in Photoshop. This is just something for me to start off with. So what I want to mention uh, also that if you will look at the pictures and not paintings and you will see at that era uh, that vignetting been um, using heavily so there is always will be a focus on the face and vignetting will be on top of it so it will be darker. I will not uh, even though you can make, uh, you can create vignetting here in Lightroom, uh, it's not what I'm going to do just because I'm going to show you a very neat trick that will going to take care of that later on. And I think I'm done here in Lightroom. Yeah. By the way, if you don't have Lightroom or for some reason you don't want to use it or you're just not used to use it, you can do all these adjustments in Photoshop plugin camera row that comes with Photoshop. Okay, so now we in Photoshop. And just to save time, I did some uh, basic correction. So let me show you. Okay, here you go. It's a difference already. So I just uh, fixed the background. And the important thing, I didn't do much to the skin. I didn't do any frequency separation, which I usually do just because it is a painting and it should uh, look quite um, natural, I would say. Uh, so what I did, I just, I really uh, emphasized the eyes. I did some uh, sharpening and some dodging and burning very lightly. And the important thing is I elongate the neck 
a little bit just to create that posture and that kind of more noble feel uh, and if you will see the long neck very long neck is something that uh, predominant on the uh, images or the paintings of uh, that time okay so with this being said this is now we're working with and you remember I told you that I'm going to show you a cool little trick which is so simple yet very very cool okay so here it is this is a canvas texture with the um, and you see it has a very nice vignette in it which is great just because vignetting is something that you find also very common on the practically every single painting of that time has a vignetting quite strong one and this one take care of the vignetting probably we will have to add some more I'll show you how but what I'm going to do and if you're wondering where I got it I download from internet and I will really try to find the link uh, to download this is the there was three texture I believe this is texture number two that I like to use and I'll really try to find it and share the link to download in the description box so please make sure to check it out Okay, so now I'm just taking a move tool, just pressing V and I'll just drag it onto my image. You can play with different blending modes here and it will be really depending on your image. So, you know, all pictures are different. For example, usually whatever I'll go for, it's like overlay or soft light. This looks really, really nice. It looks like painting already. Um, so you can play around with this one. But today I'm going to show you a little bit different. I'll leave it at normal. And I'll go to the, not the opacity, but the fill. There is a bit difference between opacity and fill, even though they look similar. But opacity is just make thing, uh, the make image lighter and lighter and lighter when the fill makes it less intense so i will go to fill but you can go with whatever just try and play around it will depend and i will just make the fill a little bit lower 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 until i like it i'd say okay so i've decided to go with opacity 20 percent and then I put mask on top of the texture just by clicking here. And now I'm going to select the brush tool and make sure that the color is black and opacity is 8%, 8-10%. It will depend on your image, play around, but low opacity you can always build up. And lightly just go over the face and the body. You do want to keep a little bit of texture everywhere. But what I want to do is I want to erase texture from the eyes and make it pronounced and the main features. So can I lightly take away from the face? But make sure that you don't go away from the edges so it will not be like a weird halo all over your subject. It's already a huge difference. So look how easy it is. Just put the texture on top of your image, lower the fill, or you can try to lower an opacity. I prefer fill, but see whatever works for you best or whatever works for your image. You can play with uh, blending modes. For this particular image, I chose not to, but it's, it's all depend on the image. And now one more thing, what we will going to do, we will going to uh, go for the curves adjustment layer and I'm just pulling them down. Oh, look, it looks so nice. Maybe I should kind of leave it like that. Looks so painterly, isn't it? Oh, it looks so pretty. Anyways, yes, we just <laughs> we just take it down, down, down. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the circle selection tool. So it's a was it marquee tool, I believe? Yes. I, 
but I choose the circle and we will going to create a vignetting all over it and if you need to adjust it just uh, the right click on your mouse or pen and choose transform selection and just I'll make it a little bit larger just as so okay yes and I'm going to press delete yes and command D for deselect and now we are almost there what you're going to do is filter blur Gaussian blur and now you bring in somewhere to have the edges and I prefer to look at my navigator because uh, whenever you look at the picture closer you not necessarily see it as um, as accurate on the well this type of things like blurs and stuff I always prefer to look on the smaller navigator then you can see the edges better so I prefer to do a little bit more yes just as so okay and let's see before and after look at that looks so nice already now I'm almost done here but what I don't like I like the composition I like the vignetting I like all the texture but I don't really like the colors it's kind of still bland so I'm going to work on that now I'm going to go first to my levels adjustment layer and if you uh, watch my other tutorials editing you know that I love levels I love I use levels more than curves just I think it's easier but it is matter of preference they very similar I mean curves is more advanced if you need some advanced things but for usually that's you know levels is enough for me and I think it's easier to use so I'm kind of I, I think I'm going to go a little bit brighter but I want to bring out shadows a little, a little bit more to kind of make it more contrasty and let's pick brightness a little bit higher but the thing is whenever you look at the portraits you see that the usually highlights are not super bright so maybe if I will go for the lower the whites a little bit so as you see not the main um, what's what's the I don't I don't know how this thing's called it just slipped my mind I'm so sorry this this, this thing I'm sorry this if you will move it a little bit um, is it coarser I'm, it's, I'm sorry, just slip my mind how this little thing's called. So yes, just if you will move it a little bit. So basically, what is this is for? It shows you the uh, gradient from absolute black to absolute white. And the histogram shows you uh, the image from the absolute black point to the absolute white point. Whenever we bring them, for example, the cursor is not at the beginning of the insta uh, histogram. So it shows that there is no absolute white uh, in our image. And also I am move it a little bit so you see it's brighter and then it's going a little bit kind of dimmer because we reduce the whites, the white, the value of white uh, in the picture, which can create, I feel more authentic. I like it a lot and yet we still have that, you know, contrast. Let's see before and after you can definitely see the difference but it's still subtle just because i reduced the values of whites it's still subtle it's still not the high contrast again this is a matter of uh, taste you might like it uh, or depend on the image you might have image that the more contrasty and lots of white will go better i'm just working with this, this image and i feel like uh, this is what looks good to me okay and now i want to play around with color there's many ways to do that uh, i'll try to go with uh, color lookup because it's just great addition i think it's uh, they added in uh, photoshop cc maybe 2018 and now 2019 they already have it so if you if you're in a subscription base you should have it color lookup and what I usually do, I go to bleach by bypass, but I never leave it. Uh, I don't use this one, but what I do, I'm just reduce the opacity to 20%. You don't have to do that. That's just my 
around this and then I'm just going and see look the candle like it looks divine beautiful crisp form wonderful cooler tone edge umber a little bit too warm for my taste fall colors gorgeous film stock yes divine very nice so just go through the different presets and i really like it because this is kind of a preset that will help you uh, a lot of them look very very nice and so why did i go first to the uh, beach bay pass in order to lower the opacity because i usually apply cooler lookup of course it depends but i start from 20 percent and then i adjust so that kind of gives me the idea how the preset will affect my image. I think I'm going to go with either Chris Warm. I really like it. It's a little bit darker. I can adjust that. Or maybe fall colors. Mm, decisions, decisions. Maybe film stock. Film stock looks really good too. I, I think I'm going with the film stock. Okay, now I'm happy but i'm thinking to maybe uh, make shadows a little bit brighter and reduce whites okay and here you got it uh, of course you can depending on your image you can play more with the colors and you know, you can add some hue, you can do color balance, it all depends on the image. Because this particular picture is just about skin and, you know, light skin and dark outfit and dark background. So it's all about just the contrast, it doesn't have many colors to work with. And I'm not really, I'm already happy with the colors here, I think they look very kind of authentic and painterly. Uh, let me show you the before and the after all the effects that we created. So this is our final and this is the before. So this was the picture and this is, was the effect. And I think this is a very, very cool way to create, you know, that painterly style. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you can hear the bird, I'm so sorry about that. I just want to participate in the tutorial. So here was the whole tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed and find it useful. Please thumbs up if you did share, if you want uh, other people to see the tricks as well. And please comment and let me know if you enjoy it. I would like to hear it from you and subscribe to support the channel and for more uh, awesome videos like that. And hopefully see you next time. Bye.